ASLers, welcome back to VASO 101, Lesson 7. I'm calling this episode Navigating the Menu. Let's uh, fire up VASO and then load up. You can load up uh, any board configuration or any scenario you may have had, but uh, I'm going to load up uh, the Eastern Gate, the scenario we've been working on, just to step through the uh, menu system show you the functionality there. Let's open that up. Let me maximize that. This should be familiar to uh, any of the users who have been following, on, <coughs> following along and the other Vassal 101 videos that I've made, um, Pacific Theater scenario. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically uh, step through the menu system just briefly on each item. You could spend quite a long time on this, but I just want to give an overview and get people familiar with the functionality and all the things you can do with the uh, menu bar and some of the more important configuration options. So let's start with uh, let's start with this little guy. Um, the squad leader guy here in the cor upper corner. Uh, you're a little familiar with how to pick uh, new boards for a scenario, how to do overlays in previous uh, lessons using this uh, menu item pick. Um, if you're not sure, go back to lessons, I think three, four, five, um, and that'll show you how to use uh, uh, this uh, terrain transformation and board uh, configuration option. But let's look, look at this uh, show height overview window real quick. This is kind of nifty if you have a very large board layout. This is only essentially a two board layout. Uh, but if you have one that's, I don't know, six boards, or if you have a large historical map, this can be quite handy. Um, you can pop this up because you might often find that you're zoomed in while you're playing either because it's a huge map or you have lots of counters. Maybe you're playing Red October or Red Barricades or Comp Group Piper or whatever, what have you. You can zoom way in, see all your units and all the mess that they're creating and that you have to manage. And you can use this uh, navigation window to move around the map. And it will show uh, counters on the map. Let me just drop a prep fire counter on here. You can see it here on the... Uh, the uh, insert map here. So you may have a bunch of cluster of units up here you're working on, and then you want to go down here and work on these guys. So that's quite quite handy if you have to zoom in on large maps. Um, other options here are that I like to use is toolbar activation on off. If you look over here on the right, I like to use a toolbar uh, on the right. I don't really use the one on the top. Um, so if you turn that, I'll turn it off. Let me turn the uh, overview window off to. So normally it looks like this. I always, to maximize my screen space, I always just drag this out of the way and pop it down if I need to, to look at any messages or any dialogue from the game that pops up. So I, I always get this out of the way and that kind of gets the uh, roll bar uh, where you roll the dice out of the way. I like to use one over on the right uh, and place the, have the dice scroll over on the right as opposed to having this window down and seeing the dice show here. And I'll show you how to do that. So click on the little squad leader guy here and click on toolbar activation on off. And you'll see this bar over here on the right shows up. That's all your, it's basically recreating this top bar over on the right. Um, so all your dice rolls will show up uh, over the map if you do this. And if you want the dice, rolls to be persistent, you can hit this pin button uh, and they'll stay there. Otherwise, they'll disappear after a certain amount of seconds that you can set under preferences. Um, I often record my game, so I pin them so all the dice rolls uh, stay showing up. You can, you can erase them or sweep them away. That's what this uh, broom is. You can kind of get rid of them. But if you want to see what they were, you just hit this arrow and it'll show your last eight die rolls and they'll show back up again. So you can clear the screen and bring them back. You can unpin it and they'll go away. They'll eventually fade away. Maybe it's 10. Maybe my setting is for 10 seconds. There they go. 
uh, but you can bring them back. Um, so I prefer to use this uh, roll bar for my dice. You can move it to the other side if you want. I prefer it on the right. It's just my preference using this arrow at the bottom. So that's kind of handy. If we click on the uh, little squad leader guy again, the all of these options down here have to do with the configuration for your button bar. Uh, it's called QC. I'm not sure QC stands for quick something configuration. So you can copy, delete, or you can modify. Let me just click on modify. You can see you can basically customize your what shows up on your uh, menu, your button bar for your different counters you want to use. You can rename things. You can customize it with different levels. Um, if there's a little triangle in the corner, uh, that means there are multiple pick options there. So, oh, I just lost my window. There it is. So I haven't messed with this at all, but you can go wild and customize, rearrange anything you want um, with the counter set up that's showing along along the top here. Um, let's just step through the, these buttons real quick. So this is your undo button. So if you accidentally delete a counter, oops, that guy didn't get killed. He was actually casually reduced or whatever. You just said undo, he'll show back back up. If you move some guy, move a guy, oh, I, I want to move back, but I forgot where I moved and just hit back. So it's essentially an undo like most Windows apps. This button is to connect to the server. I'll cover actually connecting to the server in lesson 11-ish, somewhere in there. I'll show you how to fully connect to the server, create rooms, join rooms, and that sort of thing. Uh, Offboard artillery, this is where you can set up offboard artillery modules. So you can set your red number of black and red, and then um, whenever you need to try to gain battery access, you just click on it. Oh, I got a red. Um, and then you can add modules if you have multiple modules per scenario. Uh, and you can give them names here. So that's oh, two reds, nice. So that's very handy for off-board artillery. Uh, info is just scenario info. I never use this. Um, you can put private notes, notes, your ELR levels, snipe, sniper activation numbers. I actually put that information out here um, in templates. It's just easier. It's just right there in front of you. You don't have to go up here and do info and then close it. I just put it up out on the map board. It's much easier to see. Here you've got some buttons that will kind of simulate night. It just dims the board or rain, fog, mist type of thing. Uh, notes can be handy. The the most uh, the best functionality of the notes is the delayed. These are pretty self-explanatory. Scenario notes, anyone can type in here. Public notes, anyone can type. Private notes are just for you. Only you will see them. <clears throat> delayed notes are handy for things like hidden initial placement. You say you have a gun and you set it up hip at the beginning of a scenario. You can do new, give it a name, like hip gun. And then you can say what hex it's in, what hex, number, and covered arc spine it's on, and the gun designation. And hit OK. And no one will see it until you hit this revealed button. Like You can save it. And then say your gun becomes uh, revealed. You have record of where it was placed uh, at the beginning of the game. Your opponent will see this line here, but that's all he'll see. He'll just know there's a delayed note that you have a hidden in placement, hidden initial placement gun somewhere. When it gets revealed, you hit reveal and hit reveal, and it'll show up here. Uh, the coordinates which showed up here, I'm sorry, the message that is revealed will show up here. Then the player can go in here and click on it, and he will be able to see this then because it'll be revealed. Otherwise, he won't be able to see that until you click Revealed. So that's pretty handy. Um, this is your order of battle uh, selection, how to build an order of battle, and, and all the informational counters. I'll show you how to navigate through this in one totally separate video on how to 
pick your order of battle for this particular scenario, uh, the Eastern Gate. Um, here are your basic charts. You've got infantry fire table and the notorious incremental infantry fire table, which we do not use. We we use the infantry fire table, I guess we're purists. We've tried the I, IIFT, but we didn't really like it. Uh, close combat, ordnance, vehicle to kill, uh, AP, APCR, heat, uh, and high explosive concealment uh, table, and terrain. So this is basically all the, all the basic things you need to get going. And you probably reference these charts. If you need to reference chart or reference a chart or need information, you're probably referencing these 90% of the time. So they're built into the game. If you plan a multi-monitor uh, computer, you can have this on a separate uh, monitor, which I've done before, or you can just pop it up. Uh, oops, wrong one. Pop it up using this button. Uh, this is the draggable overlays window. Now this is not terrain overlays that I showed you how to do in a previous video, placing, for example, this large uh, overlay. These are things like uh, fire for effect barrage um, graphics or random river, stream, roads, um, shell holes, control markers, um, things like that, uh, victory condition hexes. Now one thing to know about all of these overlays in this menu, let me just drag this one out. When you get them on the board, the only way to select them is you have to shift left click, then you can select them. Um, that prevents players from um, Say they want to pick a group of counters um, that are put on the board from this uh, counter bar up here. You can do you can do that, and you can you can grab them all. So let me just put some others out here. You might want to pick a few like that. You see that I didn't pick this V, which is actually something you would permanently place on the board or maybe not permanently, but maybe for a turn or two or the whole game. You don't want them to be picked unless you purposely pick them. That's why you have to do a shift left click to pick any of the labels or overlays from this menu, from the draggable overlays. But there's a lot of uh, interesting things in here and very useful things. Um, basically just dig around through here and look to see here's some paths tracks lots of various miscellaneous terrain you can place so if you need to um, i don't know why there are um why these counters are in here because their residual fire is typically removed right away so i've never used a residual fire from the draggable overlays that's semi-permanent i've always used you know this version here but anyway um this the next one over is draggable overlays for deluxe boards so these are just larger versions of what's in this um button here for draggable overlays now these are add-ons or extensions I've added. I am not going to cover these. I'll cover extensions in another video other than the overlays one that I covered, uh, I think, two, one or two videos back. Um, here's a line of sight tool. I'm going to do a separate video, lesson eight. I'm going to cover the line of sight tool because there's some really neat things you can do with that if you set it up the way you want it. But real quick, it's basically just a line of sight tool to check line of sight. That's all it is. But there are things you can set up to make it more more usable, more functional for you. Um, and this is a silent line of sight tool. Here's your zoom buttons. Uh, zooming way in, it stops at a certain level of zoom. Zooming all the way out, it stops. And then you can do other, you can pick different increments. You can fit width, height, or visible, or you can enter enter a value, any value you want within some range. I'm not sure what the range is. Um, now this one is 
remove all counters of a given type. So I have some prep fire, uh, DM counter, defensive fire counter, first fire counter, a pin counter, and a residual fire, uh, not including this one. I'm going to get rid of that. So say you get to the end of your prep fire uh, or the end of advancing fire and you want to remove all your prep fire and advancing fire. Let's drop an advancing fire down there. Instead of going, say you have a huge scenario, you may have, you know, 10, 15, who knows how many of these. If you're playing a large scenario, you just come up here and click uh, prep fire and it'll get rid of all prep fire counters on the board or all defensive fire or all uh, desperation morale or all pin TI or all uh, residual or all smoke for example, or gray smoke. Um, pretty quick, you can get rid of a lot of things uh, very quickly. Uh, this is, I should, let me undo that, get some counters back on the board. Uh, this is basically show the board. So if you have a ton of counters on and you want to kind of eyeball the line of sight before committing a fire attack, you hit this and it gets rid of all the counters on the board and it kind of clears the board. Hit it again. And it comes back. Well, you hit it again, and it'll get rid of these uh, draggable overlays. See this victory condition hex down here? If I hit it one more time, it gets rid of that. So you hit it a third time, and you come, and it puts everything back on the board. Um, this is show uh, highlighted broken units or broken weapons. Again, very handy. Let me just drag a, drag a single man counter out here somewhere. Um, very handy if you have a very large scenario. Say this guy is broken, um, but there's counters everywhere. Maybe he's stacked under a stack that you forgot or something. You get to your rally phase. You want to make sure you find everything that you have the potential to rally or fix. You just hit this button, and it'll put a red circle on anything that's broken, anything with a DM counter, I believe and anything that's a uh, broken weapon, machine gun or gun, I think even main armament. Um, but it'll also highlight your opponents. So you kind of need to pick through, it highlights everything. So you need to pick through what's yours and what isn't, but it's still a good way to remind yourself uh, of what needs to be potentially rallied. Uh, this is turn off uh, sniper counters. This is, uh, getting rid of the move tag on counters. Let me uh, let me rally this guy, unbreak him. Let me zoom in. Say you move this guy. He goes one, two, three, four. Uh, and then at the end of your turn, um, after you've advanced, or yeah, after your advance, this is also a good indicator to know who who moved, who can advancing fire, and that kind of thing. Um, but once you get past, say, your advancing fire phase, if you hit this, it'll remove that moved tag from anything that's moved that turn. I kind of forget to do that, so I'll find myself going into a new turn with a bunch of move tags on units. I need to get in a better habit of uh, hitting this uh, and getting, getting rid of that move tag. Um, after that, these are all the units uh, or counters, primarily informational counters. Um, that are in the default uh, button bar or counter bar, whatever you want to call it. Again, that can be completely reconfigured to your taste using this modify current QC configuration. Um, you can just drag, drag them out like normal. Um, if there's a, again, if there's a triangle, there are multiple selections and it'll uh, pop the menu down. Most most of the stuff you're going to access is for informational counters. Probably 90% of it is in uh, this bar or in a uh, pop-down menu off of a bar. And remember that on the back side of counters, um, there are also alternate counters. So bounding fires on the back of prep fire, uh, no fires on the back of intensive fire. I think final fire is on the back of, yeah, you can flip first fire to a final fire counter. Um, 
just remember that almost every counter has a dual functionality. They have a main side when you pull them down and a back side that has uh, additional information on it. Now, the last thing that we'll go through real quick is the uh, roll bar. I use mine over on the right. Now, you could very happily spend the entire game just using the two dice or a one dice that say other. They work just like any of these other rolls. But if you're interested in watching or keeping track of your statistics for uh, a certain type of role, try to get in the habit of using a role that's specific, a button that's specific to the type of attack or or die roll that you need. So infantry fire table, inf infantry fire table attacks use IFT to hit, use TH to kill, morale check, rally, close combat. Uh, any task check, uh, and then the, these last three are just single rolls, so there's just the other, like I showed you before. It has no associated type of roll with it, uh, but the other ones are uh, sniper activation and uh, random selection. Now, the reason you do that, or the reason I do it, is if you're a stat junkie, and you get to the end of the game and you're like, damn, this vassal die roller, it's a piece of shit. What kind of rolls did I get? So you can come up here. Uh, this is when you drag down this uh, collapsible area and you hit this uh, dice roll stats. And it will show you um, your stats for each particular category. Now, if you didn't use a particular button for a particular application, if you just used other you would see, oops, I should show. So here's die rolls, single die roll, and here's capital DR, two die rolls. Um, if you just use the other, just the, the two dice icon and the one dice icon, you would have only one entry for each table. It would just say other and other for, for your two, two die roll. By using the button for a particular situation, you can see the stats for all of your close combat attacks, all of your morale checks. Um, it'll break down your stats for you so you know, oh, wow, I did pretty good on my close combat. Well, I only rolled once, but but I did really crappy on uh, task checks. And it can kind of break down the numbers for the type of game you had, and maybe you can feel a little better about the dice roll getting out diced by your opponent right you can say oh i got out diced because i couldn't hit anything with two hits or i couldn't rally anything um, it's just a good way to keep track of your stats some people don't care they can just hit the uh two dice icon and the one dice icon and get the dice roll they need and they don't care about the stats but i, I like to look at the stats um let me i guess one more final thing let's go up to file uh, preference. So this is where you can load games and save games, etc. Um, preferences. There's not a lot you really need to, need to worry about in here. Here's the board directory that we talked about before. Points to your board directory. Um, the line of sight tool I'm going to go over in, in the next video. It should be fairly fairly short. The other thing I like to do is when I'm playing because I like to record my games, is I change the color of the dice to the nationalities that are being played. They're currently set up to me, my session being British, British tan, and my the opponent, whoever's rolling on the other end of the server, is German blue right now. And then I have my single color die um, is, oops, is red. I'm sorry file preferences uh oh the colored die sorry the colored die i have is red and the single die is all the single die rolls are blue so I, I like to set that up and you don't really need to worry about any of this other stuff um oh you do need to set this up if you're connecting to a server but i'll show you how to do that when we when we do that in another video um yeah, I haven't really felt the need to mess with any of these, except 
mark move pieces, which is handy. If you move a counter, it'll put the move tag on it. You should have that checked. I think it's checked by default. So you can come in here and you can play around. Oh, you can change the font sizes on your dice rolls if you want. Um, font size and, and font type. But if you feel the need, come around, come in here and you can play around with some things. Um, and you might find some settings that make the game look a little better to you uh, and function a little better for you. So that's it for the basics, a quick run through, and it probably wasn't so quick. I think I'm at 25 minutes already. This is way longer than I planned. But there's a lot of information, a lot of picks, and I didn't even get to um, the extensions that I have, and I don't. I only have a few on here. But uh, that's it for this lesson of navigating the menu. Uh, next lesson, lesson eight, should be short. It's going to cover the line of sight tool. Uh, and I won't be using this map. I'm just going to pull up a generic board because the line of sight tool, the generic functionality of it works. It will draw a line of sight line, and you can you have to decide for yourself if it's, if it's blocked or not. But if the board has been created, uh, you know, whoever the board elves, whoever they are, who create these boards, if they create them correctly and put a lot of time into it, I'm not exactly sure how they're created. There's more functionality to the line of sight tool than just a black line. It'll show you height differences. It'll tell you whether it's a hindrance and how many hindrances you are there are or whether it's blocked and the the line will change color depending on that so i'll show you that in lesson eight um which will probably be in a day or two this video is a little late but i want to get the next one out fairly quickly so sorry this went a little long hopefully it's informative to people who are just getting in the vassal and maybe get a little maybe a little intimidated by all the menu options up here at the top um, subscribe click the button below Leave feedback if you want to see anything. Um, and until next time, remember, you don't have to roll low. You just have to roll lower than your opponent.